This week's reading is from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. This week's reading is the law of karma, bondage, or soul release. That's a question. Um, the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians contains this oft-quoted statement. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In Autobiography of a Yogi, Paramahansa Yogananda tells us a story of the life of the Benares saint, Trilongaswami. A skeptic once determined to expose Trilonga as a charlatan. A large bucket of calcium lime mixture used in whitewashing walls was placed before the Swami. Master, the materialist said in mock reverence, I have brought you some clabbered milk. Please drink it. Trilonga unhesitatingly drained to the last drop the container full of burning lime. In a few minutes, the evildoer fell to the ground in agony. Help, Swami, help, he cried. I am on fire. Forgive my wicked test. The great yogi broke his habitual silence. Scoffer, he said, you did not realize when you offered me poison that my life is one with your own. Except for my knowledge that God is present in my stomach, as in every atom of creation, the lime would have killed me. Now that you know the divine meaning of boomerang, never again play tricks on anyone. The well-purged sinner, healed by Trilonga's words, slunk feebly away. Yogananda goes on to say, The reversal of pain was not due to any volition of the master, but came about through unerring application of the law of justice, which upholds creation's farthest swinging orb. Men of God-realization, like Trilonga, allow the divine law to operate instantaneously. They have banished forever all thwarting cross-currents of ego. Not by reason alone, but by self-realization, are the ins and outs of destiny fully understood. Their web, though tied forever to the post of ego motivation, is too intricate to be perceived as a single thread. Only great masters can see it with clarity. It is visible to them in all its workings, not from within the tangle, but from above, in superconsciousness. As Sri Krishna said in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he who beholds inaction, inaction, and action in inaction, is wise among men. He is one with the spirit. He has attained the true goal of action, perfect freedom. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Om, Om. Good morning, great souls. I trust you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I uh, was thinking yesterday about our national holidays. And it's, it's interesting to me that there seems to be a balance in them. That Halloween, we have first there's Halloween. And then the next day is All Saints Day, which when, we, when you know, you're supposed to at least when my parents were growing up, you know, you'd go knock over the outhouses on Halloween and then put them back up on All Saints Day, you know, and fulfill the things that needed to be done. And then we have Christmas, which is about the inner birth of Christ within ourselves and finding God and Jesus. And we balance that out with New Year's a few days later, which is probably the most outgoing drunken brawl that America has for a holiday. And then we have Thanksgiving, which is a beautiful holiday. We give thanks for everything, and it's followed the next day by Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and my hope is that nobody got killed this year. Last year, I think somebody got killed in their battle for stuff. 
you know. But it's just, it's just so interesting to me that, that mass, I was reading a talk by Yogananda the other day, and he said, the world is nothing but a huge mental hospital. <laughs> and, and I thought, yeah, that's pretty much right, you know. And our bondage, our bondage is our desires, you know, if, if we can. Um, and it isn't really desires, it's attachment to the desires. It's thinking that somehow there's something outside of myself that's going to make me happy. And in this country, there's what, 300, close to 350 million people out there looking for something outside themselves that's going to really make them happy, whether it's money or fame or power or, you know, we all have to live our lives and, you know, buy new cars and houses and get new jobs and, you know, live our lives. And we can do that if we're centered in God, but if we're centered in the thing itself, um, it's, I've mentioned it before, that it's the classic Steve Martin routine about fixing this stereo, and he spends, my speakers, it doesn't sound good. Maybe I need to fix the speakers. So he keeps putting money into his speakers. He buys bigger speakers and better, better and better and better and better. And finally, he gets some moon rock speakers that are the ultimate. And then he thinks, huh, maybe it's the needle. And it starts all over again. But, and it's kind of what we do. You know, maybe if I have this, it's going to make me happy. Maybe if I have this, it's going to make me happy. And we just keep going through it over and over and over until we realize that hmm, through life's monotony, as, as Yogananda would say, we realize maybe there's something else. Maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Uh, I love the story of, uh, there's a couple of Indian stories. W one that I've told before of Milarepa who was basically a burglar and a thief and a murderer. I mean, the guy was just an animal, basically. But he found God. He found his guru. And his guru told him, because of your past karma, it's going to take you, you have to reach the point in this life of utter despair and ruin seven times. So he gave him a task of pushing a rock up a hill, big rock up a hill. And this went on and on, and, and um, he eventually made it through. But uh, there was another story about kind of the same thing that, you know, God, no matter how bad we get, God gives us an opening to, to come back, to, to, you know, find him inside. He isn't that far away. But there's the other story of uh, there's a great guru in India, and he was feeling pretty good with his disciples. And so his disciples started asking him, you know, how long, how long do I have to reincarnate to find freedom? And he, the first disciple, he said, oh, he said, I think you might find it in this lifetime. And so he, all the disciples were, of course, really excited. And they started coming up to him and asking him. And uh, another disciple came up and he says, well, it might take two or three. And uh, finally, a great disciple that was in the group came up and the guru looked at him and said, oh, it might take you 100 lifetimes before you find freedom. And everybody was shocked. And the, the disciple just started dancing in joy and ecstasy. And they said, why? You've got 100 lifetimes. And he goes, it's not the lifetimes. Didn't you hear him? The guru said, I would be free. And that put him into ecstasy, and then the other disciples understood why he was such a great soul. But that's our lot as well. I mean, we have freedom. Yogananda promised us that, you know, but our soul release has to come from finding the truth within. within. I mean, that is our ticket out by going in, you know. If, um, for most of us that have a centered life, that have a meditation practice to do our Kriya Yoga and all that, we have at least a sense of a higher sphere. We have a sense of the spirit of truth that is within us that's expansive. It literally takes our energy off the surface of the body into our spine and up to where God is, where God lives, because we're, we are a part of all that is. And it's for us to tune in and find that freedom inside 
And that's the hard part. I mean, most of us just, there's just, Maya is strong. I mean, it's, the push is out, you know? It's to find what's out there. There's got to be something there. And to go inside, to be calm, to be centered, to stay in your spine, find a life of service that works for us is tough to do. Um, it's not an easy task. You have to really work at being happy. But the other part of it is, if you make up your mind you're going to be happy, nobody in the world can make you unhappy. And if you make up your mind that you're going to be unhappy, nobody in the world is going to be able to make you happy. It's your choice. It's bondage or soul release. You know, it's literally, what do you want? You know? And uh, I, uh, part of it is, uh, for us, I think we feel, I don't know what the, what the, right, what the right word is, but we, uh, we want freedom. We want that joy. And we can have it. But like I say, the desires pull us stronger and stronger and stronger out. Um, when I first came to Ananda, Swami Kriyananda had written an attunement ceremony. It was predated the uh, purification ceremony. It was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony, and we do part of it once or twice a year at the community. But he had part of it where you, you said the poem Samadhi, and you stood with your arms outstretched. And uh, it was just a beautiful ceremony. But I wrote him a letter and said that how much I enjoyed it. But I, at the, I also said, but I noticed there are a lot of people in there that just don't really like it. And, uh, and I didn't quite understand why. And he wrote me a nice letter back, which was a good lesson for me, because he said, you know, keep to your own plate. You know, don't worry about what other people are doing or thinking or saying. And, you know, we have a tendency to judge people. I mean, it's one of our, it's just, it's on a conscious level we make judgments. And I don't know why, but we do. But it made me realize when I was in India, you've, most of us have read the autobiography of a yogi. Well, the saint with two bodies. The story in India that I got was that he was an opium addict when he was at a younger age. And, and I got, got to thinking about that, and I thought, you know, how can we judge people? Everybody's path in here is just completely different. And, you know, if being addicted to opium is going to get you to God, you know, hey, you know, that's, that's the way it is, you know. <laughs> Most of us don't have to go through that. You know, we don't have to become drug addicts or anything, any of the rest of it. Most of us are pretty, pretty straightforward in our path. It's not that hard to find God. But it's, it's a battle. It is a constant, constant battle. And the power of Maya is strong. It's meant to pull you out. It's meant to take you away from your center. Um, but at the same time, God is there. He's right behind your thoughts. And if you tune into it, if you realize that his presence is in there, then you begin, to, you've got angels behind you. I mean, Sue is constantly telling me that she's constantly praying to angels for this or that or the other thing. And for us, we have to make our environment not of the world, but we have to make it of God. We have to be centered at the point between the eyebrows. And we have to give God to the world because as you look around, you know, I, we've had a perfect example of it with not only Black Friday, but our political process that's going on right now. It's just, a, it's just a zoo. It's just absolutely amazing. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. And, you know, if you're centered in yourself and you realize what people really need is God. And as that is our mission, is to give people that opportunity to find peace within themselves. Because... As we see, everybody's looking for something else for that. Maybe there's that politician that will make things right, you know. And you've got to be involved in it. You've got to work at it. Even Yogananda used to watch the news and was very much a part of what was happening in his life. But he wasn't attached to it. It was God's play. It's God's dream. Um, I want to uh, 
Yogananda said also, he said, analyze yourself. Find out, think about what it is you really want. He said the problem with people when they analyze themselves too much is they get depressed. It's they realize, I'm not living the kind of life that I'm supposed to be living. And he said, don't do that. Don't be depressed. Analyze yourself, figure out what you want to do, and then take steps to do it. And as don't, you know, like the song it says, you know, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and don't mess with Mr. In Between. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And there is no other way. There is absolutely no other way. Because this world will try to tear you down. Um, it's just, it's incredible. Um, this book, Man's Eternal Quest, is, uh, I'm going to read a little reading out of it, but this has kind of been my Bible. When I came onto the path, I think I've said this before, my brothers were on the path and they gave me autobiography of a yogi and I read it and I thought, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> People flying out of caves and all this other weird <laughs> stuff. And, but I got a hold of this book and I started reading it. This is um, Yogananda's lectures from the 20s and 30s, early 40s. And there are his public lectures and I just couldn't prove the guy wrong, you know. And even in this, he keeps saying, if you want to find God, don't do what? Don't, you know, don't follow me. Find out for yourself. The criterion for religion is self-realization, you know. Find out inside what works. Because, you know, every person in here is completely different. Granted, we all can use the same techniques, you know, but it's just... You know, it's like, an, it's like if you were all painters, I could give you all the same technique of how to paint and do this and that and how to get it exactly right. And each and every single person in here would come up with a painting that is completely different from the person next to him. And that's, that's part of the beauty of life. So we, I think it's important that we remember that in our, in our sojourn, is that we are different. And uh, that's what makes us unique and beautiful. But this, this reading is taken from, and God is all happiness. And he says, <clears throat> what, a, what a dream this life is. And yet, when you look at your body now and see how it throbs with life, you become fully convinced again of the reality of this dream. You think you must have this or that, and then you can be happy. But no matter how many of your desires are satisfied, you will never find happiness through them. The more you have, the more you want. Learn to live simply. His, and then he gives this quote, and he doesn't say what it's from. I imagine the Bhagavad Gita. The more you have, um, the more you want. His mind is full with contentment whose desires ever flow inward. The man is like a changeless ocean which is kept rimful with constant entering waters. He is not a Muni or a renunciant who bores holes of desires in his reservoir of peace and lets the waters escape. And I thought, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I think to close, just remember, always remember that God is right there and if you, like Master said, if you think me there, near, I am there. And keep that with you all the time. Because the more we practice the presence of God, the more, the greater the reality becomes. And that's what we have to give to the world. Because as you look around, as I look around, it's just, I see craziness coming in at us from every direction. And I don't see it getting a lot better. So keep God with you. I think uh, it will make us very happy. I'd like to give you an opportunity to um, 